right, let's get started on today's session. Thank you everyone for coming to the live streams. I really appreciate it when you guys show up to the live stream. If you guys are not getting any notifications, please go on my page, on my on my YouTube. If you don't know how to get there, just go to istabrak.com. Go to the little YouTube icon and click on the notification bell. Make sure it's on. I don't see it because I am the owner. But I would like for you guys to go here. It's somewhere in this vicinity. Um, and turn on that little bell so that you guys can get notifications. So you can join the live stream if you're interested in joining the live stream. Um, let's talk about today's session. So Portrait Studio is on sale. I'll be trying to use Portrait Studio today. Um, I'll try. I'll try to use it. But it's, it's already been um, uh, announced. It's uh, already on sale. It'll be on sale most likely until the end of November, maybe all of November and December. Yes, I know, two months of 50% off. That's crazy, but I don't see any reason why it should be off sale for two weeks if it's just gonna be on sale two weeks into December. And if I'm making it on sale for a month of November, and you guys have been waiting patiently all summer long for a sale, I might as well just leave it on sale. Um, but I, I'll think about it. Um, but uh, but yeah, it'll be on sale for the rest of the month. I hope if I if it's too many people requesting for a post sale promo code. If not, a lot of people like five people ask me. I won't leave it on for a month. It'll be just two weeks and then a month break and then two weeks into December. It'll be on fifty, up to fifty five percent off in December. For anyone who wishes to own it, what is Portrait Studio? It's a reference engine thing. It. Brings, make, it makes the world that you want to draw for you before you have to draw it so you have the perfect reference available to you without having to look endlessly on Google or looking for the pose uh, or, or a reference that you need. It is on sale at $44 from $90. Um, the current holiday challenge is up on the Reddit, so please go to the Reddit if you guys uh, want to join this holiday challenge. It's a full illustration full book cover, high energy illustration of um, a, a wizard fighting another wizard. And one wizard is Saint Nick, but as a high wizard. So you guys have to put some creative energy in there, invest some unique take on Santa Claus as a wizard, a Dumbledore or a Gandalf or a Saruman type high wizard. Um, and, uh, and go for it and make it some cool while they're climbing a rock. They're also throwing spells at each other um if you need inspiration watch some harry potter it is the season for harry potter anyway um watch that fight in the fellowship of the ring between saruman and gandalf look at how they fight this looks like a bunch of old men <laughs> fighting each other but but it's funny and it's great they all yell my hip or something like that that's why i was laughing so hard so you want to make a bunch of rickety old men fighting each other barely <laughs> you want to you want to put a comedic element in there go ahead it's your painting but remember there's a set number of textures you have to have in there and there is a, an expected level of energy in there you have to have some energy in there right? um, you need to show some elves some little minions it's just going to be one big almost classical painting looking clash of one corner of the painting to the next I don't want to give away too much of what I expect, but I hope you guys are exploring different kinds of compositions. If it's a horizontal or vertical canvas, um, how are you going to balance both elements clashing uh, at each other, like two big waves cla uh, crashing into each other? That's the kind of energy I want to see in, these, in this illustration. It'll be looked at on the 19th of, of December, the last day we will have a critique hour this year after that. The 2nd of January will be the first critique hour after our break in December. And then another announcement. I believe that's it for announcements. If you want to support me on Patreon, you may do so. If everybody here joined as a dollar patron, I really wouldn't need to um, uh, depend so highly on YouTube, sending out notifications for everyone or monetizing my long videos. I don't plan on shrinking my videos at all, and I'm not really working with marketing or anything like that um uh, or representation for youtube i'm really just working with you guys directly if you want to show some support and join just as a dollar patron no more than that that's not uh, that's all I, I i'm asking for um it'll be an untraceable amount but it'll still if everybody joins as a dollar it'll support the community directly and it'll be something that goes a long way in a year if everybody is joining within a year within six months if i keep this campaign up this community will stand on its own two feet and it'll be um, an amazing thing to behold. So if you guys want to support me on Patreon, please do. Um, as a watcher, there's a reason why I call the $1 tier a watcher. It really watches over the community and promises its longevity and, um, uh, and infinite support. 
in, indefinitely. Okay, let's get started on today's critique hour. I wanted to take a look at this piece right here. <clears throat> I might not use Portrait Studio for this. I might use it, but um, really one of the, the biggest problems um, in working with this kind of painting is not looking at references because you're not understanding what, when you're painting a full illustration that has a sky anywhere in the painting, if the sky is visible in a painting, you have to respect that sky in your color choices. You have to respect that sky in your in your uh, value choices. You have to plan around it. You have to bring in elements from the sky, influence on your color, maybe even atmospheric uh, perspective, even if there's not, not a foggy scene. But if it's a thicket and it's a bunch of um, trees together and you have this overgrowth and there's some sky showing you have to show the light environment in the way you represent that even if it's just like a cave and you see some of the sky you still have to bring in elements from the sky and the way they influence the values and the colors um, and not just that there's one really big problem here so we're seeing the sky color right here which I believe I'm interpreting this as the sky color so take a look at what happens when we get rid of the sky color it really answers a lot of the questions and gets rid of it. And this might be the simple decision this 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 um, artist goes for. They're going to get rid of the sky, represent the thickets in the painting, and then bring in some kind of light element shining down on the character. So I'm going to try to make it like a blue. Something like that that'll help us see a little bit more of the character and it'll just be cut off like it's a cast shadow so that's when we get rid of that sky color we can have something save the day when it comes to this really really incoherent light environment so this looks good if you zoom out it looks great there's still a lot of bad shit going on though um there's no reason for the ground to be this black uh, this character is really underdeveloped. I recommend going like ham with the detail, scales, anything that you could do. Um, but this is if the color of the sky is removed. When we keep the sky, so I'm just going to save this version. And I'm getting stuffy already because I, I've been on and off like weird cycle between cold and not cold throughout the day and it's just been a nightmare. So this is with the sky showing. If the sky is showing, there is absolutely no reason why we would not see some kind of... So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to duplicate this layer. This entire layer here gets illuminated with blue. Everywhere there might be some relief in the space. And then I'm going to delete at wherever we have an object that is opposing the sky, so anything looking away from, anything not directly affected by the sky or turned toward the sky. This sky color is going to play a big role in what's visible and what's not visible, what's silhouetted, because it's the backdrop value. It is the value on which everything relies on. It is the foundation value. And then I'll use Portrait Studio to help pose this poor fella because he's just standing there. Yes, he's afraid, but it doesn't mean that he is standing perfectly stiff. When you're afraid, you stand in the position of fear. So we still need a gesture that represents fear, but he can still be, you know, scared stiff, so to say. All right, and we have some of that blue color coming through from the ground up and I'm just using that as a diffuse color so that these different elements are not directly combined. A little bit less of that silhouette through the leaves because they're looking up at the light. So we have these two options for how to interpret this illustration. We have one where the entire scene is dark but you have a little bit of light coming through. Some kind of opening that we don't see that's off camera. Abu, do you mind bringing me some napkins? I just need to blow my nose. And then we have this one where the sky is behind the character. We have some clearing in the direct vicinity of the character. So which of these works? I'm going to try to work with this one because this is the one that either the artist chose. I want to I honor it. But you have really, really two big options. If the sky is showing, write this back to me. 
if the sky is showing in your illustration, you have to use the sky as a way to build your scene, to build the different depth levels, to show the characters. You have to factor it in. And it usually is a bright background. That's the thing I'm trying not to say because then you guys are just going to go crazy and you're going to use the wrong value. It's a value that ha has to represent this, the time of day, the weather, um, and if it's visible in the background, then it is going to be used in laying out the, 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 the levels of depth, background to midground to the object wrapping around the tree back toward the foreground. If the object is not showing, if the background is not showing, which is the easiest option, it creates mood. You have this really, really dark setting, which is also really, really cool because then you can make it even more mysterious. So you have a dramatic benefit to this. All right, look at that. We have this cool drama right now. I'm just using that dark blue on darken here to help create that cool, mysterious shift into the darker half of the canvas. A little bit of darkness here. We can still use that cool diffuse color down here somewhere. Oopsie. But be very careful not to look like you know, to have it look a little too dark or something like that. There still has to be some kind of saving grace towards the bottom where the character is looking like phenomenal, looking scared, uh, the light is on them in the right direction. By the way, I don't see any kind of like tree shape at all. I just see a bunch of bushes. I, I, I don't feel like it's not that hard to know what a tree looks like. I know that it sounds a little bit patronizing. But of all the things we see the most as artists, of all the things we had to study in high school and we had a weird little still life project, I always went for trees and because I just I thought trees were such an essential thing that I had to learn how to draw a tree, especially if I was going to be a Lord of the Rings fan drawing a bunch of black riders running around. I had to learn how to draw a tree. And the beauty of learning how to draw a tree is if you know how to draw a tree, you can draw veins, you can draw hair flowing in the wind, you can draw uh, lightning. It's that chaos of nature pattern that is just beautiful to behold and it's really important for you guys to know how to represent that texture. So I'm not sure why there is no indication of any kind of tree or branches or bush or any kind of overgrowth that is not just blank, uh, you know, bush shape or blank cloud shape. Another big thing to learn is clouds too. That's a very, very big one. Okay, and then we can still have that atmospheric color in the background for the dark scene. We can still have something in the background like this. Not so much that it cancels out our drama, but just enough that it gives us like this fog effect that's happening behind the character. And in order to pull that off, we're going to need to create some depth. So this, this tree could be a little bit more contrast. So technically, I'm doing two paint over here now. Man, I'm good. All right, so I'm putting this down. And I'm just darkening this tree a little bit. And then I'm going to cast the shadow off this little dude right here. And that's really going to help us. And then I'm just going to clean that up because I do not want a tangent. <coughs> okay. And then we've got uh, some more of that bounce light, that, that kind of fog effect happening in the background. And this dude, I'm not really worried about it because we need to talk about the figure and how to pose it. So we're kind of bringing in the best of both worlds right now. We're combining both of these together. And you never had to use pure black to pull any of this off. You just had to establish a dark light environment. And again, we're just using it to help us establish the silhouette of this little fella right here, this monster. And then maybe there's a little bit more of a cylindrical core shadow wrapping around the creature as it tucks in behind. And then we have that cylinder, which is the biggest form study to perfect. 
It is so important. All right, you're gonna stay a noob if you don't know how to see a cylinder. Write that back to me. All right, so I'm just giving that some volume, bringing in burn tool for just a quick second here. Don't wanna to do too much because it's still technically an object that's disappearing into the distance. So I'm trying to fade it off, but not like cancel out anything. Okay, and then we've got, I don't know if it's the tree or the bush, but again, you could have done so much with the, with the, with the roots. You could have made them feel like they're wrapping around this boy who feels entrapped. He's met this creature for the first time and it's about to kill him, but little does he know they're going to, they're about to develop a beautiful friendship. Alright, and then um, this torn down tree, maybe because this creature's been living in it. Oopsie. <clears throat> Select inverse. Alright, so we got some cool vine effects. Right here. Um, it's still not enough for me. I feel like we, we need to just show some more roots, but it's definitely something else that's happening in the painting. Um, and then we've got this big uh, tree bush thing here that could use a core shadow. And I'm just treating every object individually. All right, nothing here glows. Nothing here is without any light on it. So again, you still have this option though, but I feel like the light shining from the top down isn't the best way to stage it. We've still kept most of that contrast. I actually like the really dark bush. Oopsie. Because um, it's going to give us some contrast in the foreground. Which is nice. It's going to be nice. A depth marker here. Objects in the direct foreground are a little bit more black, and then objects directly outside of that are all evened out and clean. So that means I'm going to select and then select inverse, and then just clean up under this object right here. So I'm going to use a little bit more of that light value. Some more light on this side of the beast. Maybe I'll let it darken because it's towards the framing half of the painting. And let this help me develop the shape of a root. <clears throat> and then I'm going to just allow some branches to get some light here okay and then you have the creature which really doesn't make a lot of sense to me it's just not the most cool design I mean if it's going to be a creature that is snake like one of the biggest things about a, a, the read of a snake is it's, it's its eyes and its little nose so if it's gonna be a snake like object uh, or snake like snake like creature it'd be really cool if you could give us something that helps helps with the read so give us anything on the snout anything at all to complete this shape okay i'm just trying to hear i'm just trying to make sense of this both in pigment of the character, so I feel like this would really look really cool as white. Um, just like that. And then I'll jump in and find a better pose for us on Portrait Studio. some scales, something, anything happening up here 
would be really cool. And then we have that really, really all important saturation line in between the shadow and the highlight. We have a little bit of saturation sometimes. It's there for a lot of reasons, not enough reasons not to use it. So it's there because midtones reveal more color. It's there because the cast shadow is sh shining through a transparent object such as the trees. There's a lot of reasons why we use it. And then we could extend that diffuse lighting at the top of his head with another color. If you want to use an environmental color, something white, um, just to show more of the top of the head and the ears so we get more of the creature coming through. Could be a warm green type thing. Yeah, green works very nicely. And then we can have some cool leaves. So, you know, the leaves that look like a little bit more flat, deep jungle leaves. Lasso is an amazing tool to use to help you quickly stencil in a silhouette of something. I use it a lot just for jotting down more general shapes while maintaining the edge that I need. And then we've got other basic shapes done with lasso. Just throw in some bigger leaves here, layering on top, some more branches. Oops, same. Okay. <clears throat> and then now we can see that there's just a lot more cleaning up to do, but the majority of everything is nice and, and crisp. So you can clean up the snake's placement in the environment some defined edges and that's typically how you render you just go back and clean up but you can't like undo the base that you added in of course I'm gonna just uh, darken that far half so now the object is visible there's a silhouette we can see There's enough shadow and darkness to reveal the character. I feel like I want to darken that background just a little bit more. But that kind of decision is made while zooming out. Always while zooming out. <clears throat> okay. And then a little bit more light just there. And then finally, I am going to darken everywhere else just so that we can maintain that drama. So that's going to be darker at the top. And then darken layer. And a little bit more dark in environment. So that I could get that spotlight just like that. See how much beautiful drama that is. I'm going to blur that foreground right up. So, duplicate the layer, blur, gauge, and blur, and just adding that, and then I'm going to delete away it, whatever is not blurred, just to help us establish that focus, that, that cinematic focus. And then, to see that before and after, now we have this focus, then we don't have to render the foreground anymore. Um, and then we've got the character, which I'll take care of in a second, and then finally we've got that darker environment behind the monster. Don't want to give away too much. We want to maintain that mystery. But we will make sure the monster is visible completely. Okay. So we've got 
the character now which we have to take care of and as you can see this monster is very very boring I mean like do something anything at all just to help us get a cooler you know like effect going on so he could have these beautiful yellow whiskers bringing in some different element maybe those whiskers shake a bit when he, when, a, when a prey is near and they go they like they rattle like a snake and their yellow is visible under the light just something to help us see the character And then throwing some of that away in the darkness. They're a little bit too thick, so I want to um, thin them out. I'll just use polygonal just to rush the process a little bit. And delete. Oops. There. bring in some detail. One more little edit. That's This is by shrinking these little whiskers that I brought in that detail. And a little bit of dodge tool just to show where some of the scales are visible. And of course that saturation belt that we get just Wherever an object only just uh, got out of a shadow. So any questions at all about this process, at is to rack to, to answer, to get the answer. All right, and I'm just going to saturate around the scales. And I'm going to use a little bit of dodge tool wherever we get some of that shine. Is the monster supposed to look shy? I think the monster is supposed to look curious, though I'm not sure. I'm going to saturate that far side just to show some iridescence to the monster. I might cancel out all of that extra highlight. Okay, so for the dude, for the fella, um, he's very stiff, he's very boring, he's not really doing much, I'm just opening Portia Studio to help pose something and then just bring that character into Porch and into the illustration because I don't really want to repaint your entire character. Um, at the same time, I, I just want this to read completely so I'll probably bring in the model and draw over it just to, it's for the sake of the before and after and not so much me showing that I can draw from start to finish. So this character here, he's horrified, he's scared. He just saw a big creature. And if he's a kid, kids have bigger heads. So I'm pressing R to increase the size of the head so it looks like a, a child. Um, the arms are gonna go down to his sides. And maybe it's just a, just a flat out shock. He's just, uh, like he's just flat out shocked. He can't believe it. Maybe he's taken a step back. And he's just ready to run, and that's why we're tilting the foot, foot this way a little bit. And then um, and the other foot, the other leg is also ready to run. But he's kind of curious as well, so maybe this hand is ready to reach out. And he's kind of mesmerized. I mean, he did come into this jungle maybe looking for this creature, and he finally saw it, and he cannot believe it. If it's directly above him, he'll do something like that. Um, as for the lighting involved, so um, I'm going to just turn off these high joints. Fair warning, Portrait Studio's entire UI is going to be different. It's going to be better with this upcoming update. It's done. The update is done. It's just a matter of days just cleaning out any last little additions, polishing. Abu is a perfectionist, um, so he's just going to try his best to make sure it is perfect. I would bring in a light just like this one just so that we can um, get the, excuse me, get the most out of uh, this reference generation. I want to match the lighting to the painting. And then I'm going to just turn the background color black because I want a better cleaner lasso. 
and um, I'm just gonna turn off any ambient light so ambient color black just screenshot that all right do we have the right angle I don't think we do so I'm just going to increase the field of view tilt this character that way and zoom in oh yeah baby now we're in business we have a little bit more of that perspective applied I don't want a flat character so now we have that perspective um, I want a bigger screenshot so I'm just using green shot here And then we're just going to drag and drop. I'm sorry that I got to drag and drop this. I'm trying to save time. But, oh, we don't even see the feet. But it's it's still it's still a good um, reference for us. Rasterize. I feel like I should have gone a little bit darker with the shadows. Because that's just how dark this scene is. So your ambient reflectivity is, a, is, is in direct correlation with your that time of day or whatever wherever the object is if it's in a dark scene if it's in a room if it's in a anything like that <clears throat> okay so this shows a little bit more of that fear of that scared stiff if you feel like showing something else if you feel like working with something else in order to show fear it'll look like maybe overacting um, I mean, you get away with that because cartooning is typically very, very close to how we design characters and illustrations. They have very cartoony, cheesy poses. Um, if, 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 you know, that superhero landing can look really, really cheesy in a movie, but then it can look great in an illustration. So you can exaggerate a little bit, um, but I feel like it's not about the boy. I feel like it's about the creature. Look at where all the contrast is. Look at where all the detail is. Look at where the lightest uh, belt of, 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 of um, spotlight is. It's not really about the character, especially because it's a character turned away from the light. This character is not um, uh, does not have a portrait, does not have a uh, any kind of, of, of attention towards the camera. So we can't really do much with this character. I'm just giving him a wash to match the environment. And if you want to shrink him, it'll be even better for the scale because then you'll be able to establish the scale. Um, so if he's smaller, it'll he'll be even less important. And it'll be much easier for us to pay closer attention to the character. All right, and that's typically where the darkest darks will be in this in this environment for this character here. The character can also be completely close to dark, and the only only reveal that we have for their um, you know their their presence is just the silhouette against the background. So you might want to get rid of some of those vines or make them smaller. I really like the darker environment for the character just because I don't want him to take over. It's very easy to make the painting about a character and not about the creature. But the creature is so cool, it's so interesting. I would spend more time on the creature. And I'm just going to bring in that very, very top light wherever the object has been exposed to that spotlight in the scene. And then whatever happens here in the middle, if there's drool, if there's something, you can add it in. But as far as the bark, you cannot escape having to detail this bark. There's no way out of it. I know you were hoping for me to say, oh, the bark's not important. You don't have to detail it. You have to detail that bark. It's, it does not get away with, you do not get away with not rendering it because it is directly in between two objects looking at each other. It is in that area where we travel back and forth and you're going to have to render that bark. Any questions? Um, um, no questions. 
Okay, I tried using Porsche Studio yesterday. I was having a few issues with the camera not responding to the mouse controls in my case and laptop trackpad. I'm gonna try and watch my tutorial first. Um, Abu says, in case the trackpads use the on-screen controls. Uh, yes, if you want to use a Porsche Studio tablet trackpad, definitely enable on-screen controls. Okay. Any questions at all? Nobody has any questions. Okay. So. Just cleaning some of this detail here. I'm just adding really, really generalized detail. And then I'm going to try to smudge away any kind of interruption. Just like a back and forth. Really, really bad job. But I'm doing my best. So it's just about doing different layers, layering it differently, um, starting with whatever the background is inviting. So this started off with a dark light environment, and then I slowly introduced an interrupting light source that came through and allowed us to see the important characters. We've created some really, really cool atmosphere. Um, we have a little bit of a weirdness happening down here in the painting. You can add in some fog if you feel like you need it. I would add it in, especially because it's a dark jungle scene, um, and I should have added it in before I lassoed those leaves, but um, alas, a lasso. Uh, that was terrible. Uh, okay so um, but what I got from your demo was this so generally stay faithful to your sky um, if what separate your foreground and background elements compositionally with natural uh, with saturation and values draw the eye to your subject now you're too good of a teacher for anyone to be confused <laughs> thank you Benjamin um, so the the first note that you made juniper um stay faithful to your sky if it is visible in the painting if it is not visible then it's a closed room okay any other questions at all so there's a long way for this illustration to go but it's definitely a step up from where it was before now it has atmosphere now it has mood now it has an environment and you had two options i don't recommend this one but this one is a little bit more friendly or a little bit more uh, kid friendly I guess we can say um, and then we have the before after a little bit more atmosphere drama uh, the delivery is a lot more focused toward the relationship between the two the character is a lot more scared or shocked he does he can be stiff he can be curious really you would need a full animation like a feature to, to be able to show whether or not he's scared or curious or both but right now, this pose is doing the the, the, the enough, I think, to represent that. The creature's head doesn't have the creature doesn't have to be changed. The creature's anatomy doesn't have to be changed. You just need to pose it right. That's all. The creature's anatomy never needed any change to it. <coughs> okay. So Portrait Studio is on sale for anyone who is interested in having this powerhouse of a reference <laughs> system um, it's currently on sale at 50% off you can get that on istabrak.com um, and just go to the store tab if you are trying to buy it but your pay cycle is not matched with the sale please send me a message on Facebook the Facebook link is right there I will give you a promo code if you don't make it for sale time I already have two requests for that um, if enough people, or five requests, I forget, if, if enough people come in who can't make it, we'll figure it out. If you can't make the full payment, if you need halves, if you need it paid in half, we can figure something out. Someone also asked me, can I make double payments? Um, absolutely you can. We just need a, you know, some kind of receipt record on email, and you would just need to make the full payments before we send you a download. I'm trying my best to make sure this program is affordable for all of you and accessible to all of you, but at the same time, stay fair to all the hard work I've been putting in um, and uh, everything that we've put in and our heart and soul that we've put into this uh, the, this, this software 
It is how we're running, how we're paying bills. Um, it is it's basically the most important thing for us on our store right now. Um, and it is Abu's number one priority day in, day out. It is, is, it is his constant baby. Um, and uh, he's constantly just taking care of it, perfecting it, making it amazing so that it's easier for you guys to use. It is all real time. You don't have to render. We will be bringing in a more variety of resources in here. Um, we will perfect the posable hand model very soon. Um, this is a great software to actually photo bash with as well if that's all you have to do um, because you can pose your way around everything. If you're a sketch artist, if you're a comic book artist, you can use this to help you create full scenes before you have to sketch them. If you are a, um, a, a, an illustrator, you can build your scene as you need it. You can build this entire scene in Portrait Studio if you have to. You can also bring in a fog element to help create that atmospheric depth. There's so much you can do with it, and there's so many videos available of, uh, of it online um, already on my YouTube channel. It's on the front page of my YouTube if you want a little bit more information on what Portrait Studio is. So click on the little YouTube icon right here and scroll down. Portrait Studio, all the information you need to know is available here in this playlist. Um, all my brushes are also on sale for the next two months, potentially. Um, and that's it for today. Any questions at all? All updates are free for life, and you do get a certain number of downloads. Uh, if you want to change computers, you just have to send us a quick message at abutheratlive.com or go to istabrak.com and scroll down to fill in a form submission. Make sure you write your emails out clearly, or else we will not be able to reply. Um, any more questions? So just to recap on all the changes we made today, I changed and chose and let time of day to, to rep so this could be daytime but the tree and the forest and the jungle is so thick we're so deep into the jungle um we are seeing only a sliver of light come in through the sky um after that i decided to use a little bit more atmosphere just to show the background value uh, so that we can see the silhouette of this snake so i'm combining two really two completely different environments foggy and overcast with clear uh, uh reveal um I'm using blur on the outsides. I'm using dark foreground elements, um, medium mid-tone elements, uh, medium mid-ground mid-tone elements. Um, and then I had to reposition the character so his scale, it complements the largeness of the character, um, but also is uh, more of an active gesture, less stiff, kind of looking forward, unanimated. We have something a little bit more high, um, uh, high, high uh, uh, gesture. <laughs> and then I added some fog elements here and there just to help dis create a distinction between the depth uh, and the levels of depth objects in the background are a little bit more diffused than objects in the foreground um, but also to help add to the mood um, it's such a deep thicket in the forest it's oh, maybe early dawn afternoon maybe the you know it's just an ominous scene and then the character looking up with his head tilt the gesture reveals like a moment of meeting I recommend a redesign on the care on the on the monster something a little bit more anatomically um, biologically appealing not just a flat top head thing and all the eyes and everything are turned conveniently away from the viewer we want to see some detail don't be scared of detail you can take this painting to all different kinds of levels if you bring in some texture overlay and work on the silhouette of some of these bushes. So before, after. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. I'll probably take a look at this next time if the theme allows. Um, thank you to everyone who comes to these uh, live streams. I really appreciate it. I love when I see you guys attending the live stream. I know a lot of you can't make it um, to the live stream because of time zone work or school restrictions, um, but I really appreciate those in the Eastern time zone or similar neighboring time zones when you guys attend. And write things back and take notes it's wonderful I'd love to see some notes handed into the reddit do you guys uh, 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 remember this or not you guys get brushes for any note takers so go to reddit join as a so go to isterback.com click on the reddit icon to submit your work so this was submitted to the reddit that's how it ended up in this video if you want that done to your work just join on reddit and submit your work um, and submit your notes along with whatever study you're posting. And I reward good note takers with brush sets um, uh, for free. 
if anyone who doesn't have a brush set and you want one and you just don't feel like buying one or you can't buy one, I will give you a brush set for free if you take some really good notes. Um, if you want to support on Patreon, if you like uh, spending um, or sending something my way, uh, you can join as a $1 watcher. It's not a lot, uh, but it does go a long way. If everyone joins as a $1 patron, you'll feel like you're directly giving back to the class. Uh, but not an, an, you know, an unrealistic amount. I understand how five and ten dollars and twenty dollars can actually add up um, and I completely understand it. I'm not asking everyone to become a twenty dollar patron. One dollar a month, twelve dollars a year. Um, if you guys feel like sending some support and definitely in my direction to help join, uh, to help keep the class and, and prolong its longevity. Um, I plan on sticking around for a really long time. And that's it. Portrait Studio is on sale. I'll see you guys on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, if you guys want to get notifications, please make sure that you go to YouTube and click on the bell. Click on the little bell that you see here or else you won't get notifications. If you click on the bell and not get notifications, that's what I'm saying. YouTube has not been working with me very well. I think it's because they don't want me to hit 100,000. Seems to be stuck in this, in this number for a while. It's been really cut down. I'm not getting recommended anywhere. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe. It'll change the way YouTube behaves with my channel if I hit 100K unless they change that minimum. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Bye, everyone.